Hi everyone, my name is Mohamed Golek. Today I am going to tell you about our work named BioSec, a biometric authentication framework for secure and private communication among edge devices in IoT and Industry 4. We conducted the study with my master supervisor, Dr. Skripal Singh Gill from Queen Mary University, Professor Omar Rana from Cardiff University, and Dr. Rami Basin from Birmingham University. My presentation consists of six main parts. These are motivation and contributions, previous studies, preliminaries, methodology and implementations, analysis and results, and conclusions and future works, respectively. Let's start with motivation and contributions. What is Internet of Things? IoT is the ability of objects to send and receive data by connecting to the Internet. Smart watches and smart TV that we use today can be given as an example. The number of IoT devices is increasing day by day. Figure 1 shows the number of active IoT between 2015 and 2025 and the number of IoT is expected to be 21.5 million by 2025. We see IoT devices everywhere, from smart city applications that solve problems such as traffic congestion and energy consumption in our daily lives, to electronic health systems that send the patient's health data to the hospital database via the server without the need to go to the hospital. Although the benefits of IoT to human life are many, it also brings a big problem such as security. As an, as an example, let's consider electronic health systems. If the IoT device controlling health data is hacked, the patient's health data can be changed, stolen, and many privacy problems may arise especially the health of the patient. For these three different methods are used today to ensure, to ensure the security of IoT. These are ensuring the security of the collected data, using an encrypted communication channel, and using user authentication. User authentication is done in two different ways. Traditional systems such as password based and token, and biometric systems such as fingerprint, face, and iris. And iris. Biometric systems have been used because traditional systems have weaknesses such as being stolen, forgotten, and shared with an unauthorized user. In our study, we used fingerprint authentication, one of the biometric methods to provide security and privacy in IoT. Because biometric data are, pers are personal information, they cannot be reproduced if stolen and they also jeopardize the security of the IoT. In addition, since biometric data can be kept in the database together with the person's home addresses and name, a second privacy issue occurs in case of stolen. Therefore, in our study, we propose to protect the biometric data both in the transmission channel and database with one of the standard encryption methods. Let's continue with the previous studies part. When we look at the literature, there are few studies that use biometric authentication to provide security in IoT. In the first study, Young et al. proposed a system that uses fingerprint authentication. The fingerprint is converted into binary codes with the MCC algorithm, and the middle bit is stored in the database by XOR processing with other bits. The advantages of the system are biometric templates in database are secured the biometric template is shortened and the processing load is reduced with the help of XOR processing. The disadvantages of the system are 
biometric data in the transmission channel is vulnerable and the security method used that is XOR processing negatively affects the recognition performance of biometric data. In another study, Nemanja et al. proposed a study that providing security in IoT with phase and iris authentication. Phase and iris images are obtained from a single image. In this way, the cost of using two different sensors is saved. Higher recognition performance has been achieved compared to authentication systems using one biometric feature. Despite all these advantages, the security of biometric data in both transmission channel and database hasn't been taken into account in the system. In the last study, Dirk et al. proposed a study combining hand geometry and gesture obtained with leap motion controller device for security in IoT. Biometric data is protected by stenographical encryption in the database. When we look at the advantages of the system, it can be used in places that require a sterile environment such as an operating room. In addition, the security of biometric data is provided. On the other hand, the system is still under development, so it is not known whether it is fully functioning and to what extent the system's performance is. The system also includes the leap motion controller device, so there is an additional equipment cost. On the other hand, Changes that may occur in the hands of users in cases such as old age and work accidents negative, negatively affect the performance of the system. In the biosec in our study, we proposed a system that provides security in IoT by using fingerprint authentication, taking into account the cost of the sensor and its recognition performance. Unlike other studies, we ensured the security of fingerprints both in transmission channel and in the database using standard encryption. Compared with methods used in other studies, the standard encryption method doesn't negatively affect the biometric authentication method performance. Yes, now let's continue with the preliminary part. In this section, we will talk about the performance measures we used to evaluate the biometric authentication performance, the methods used to secure biometric data, and the encryption methods we use in our system. The performance of biometric authentication is generally measured with three metrics. False acceptance rates. Unauthorized persons can enter the system as if they were registered even though they were not registered in the system. False rejection rate. It is the rejection of the authorized person as if they were not registered even though they were registered in the system. And a cool error rate. The point where the FAR and FRR graph intersects. Three different methods are used for biometric template protection in literature. In our system, compared to other methods, we use the standard encryption method because it doesn't affect the performance of biometric authentication negatively. Let's look at the standard encryption methods. Encryption algorithms are divided into two. These are symmetric and asymmetric algorithms. The same key is used when encrypting and decrypting in a symmetric algorithm, and this key is called a private key. In asymmetric algorithms, the private key is used for encryption and the public key is used for decryption. In our study, we will compare the encryption and decryption times by using three different symmetric encryption methods, that is, triple this. AES and DES, which are still considered safe. Now, we continue with 
methodology and implementations. Our system consists of two different parts. The first part is the client part containing the Raspberry Pi and the fingerprint sensor and the second part is the server part. Server part is built on a personal computer. Raspberry Pi and server part communicates with an application programming in interface written with Python language Flask framework. Before our system is operational, the fingerprints of users authorized to enter IoT must be registered in the system database. Users send their fingerprints to the Raspberry Pi via the fingerprint sensor. In the Raspberry Pi, device image enhancement is made to the fingerprint image and the image is tried to be enhanced from noise. Then, the improved fingerprint image is given to the algorithm to generate a biometric template. The points representing the fingerprint, we call them minutiae, are encrypted with the AES 128-bit encryption method and sent to, the, sent to the server. And it is stored in the server database with encrypted. In this way, biometric data is secured both in the transmission channel between server Raspberry Pi and in the server database. Nine different pictures of the same finger are registered for each user. After the fingerprint enrollment phase is over, our system is ready to be used. Let's look at the, let's look at the working mechanism of our system. The user who wants to log in into the system sends his fingerprint to the Raspberry Pi through the fingerprint sensor in the same way. After the image enhancement and biometric template is extracted in Raspberry Pi, it is also encrypted with the AES algorithm and sent to the server. The server calls the encrypted fingerprint templates in the database and starts comparing them with, with the fingerprint template sent from Raspberry one by one by decrypting both templates. If there is any match during the comparison, Raspberry Pi allows the user to enter the system by sending feedback. However, if there is no match, feedback will be sent to Raspberry Pi stating that there is no match and the system is not allowed. After, understand, after understanding the working logic of our system, let's look at the practical operation. First, we create the database containing the fingerprints of the people authorized to enter the system. And a database was created for each fingerprint in the form of name, biometric template, this and encryption time. Our system is now ready to use. We enable our API for communication between Raspberry Pi to server. In our system, we couldn't use a real fingerprint sensor due to its cost, but instead we set up a circuit with the same working logic as the fingerprint sensor. The circuit consists of two buttons and a LED. The first button contains the fingerprint image of the registered person, and the second button contains the fingerprint image of a user who is not registered in the system. If the sent fingerprint matches a fingerprint in the database, the LED on the device lights up twice in a row, and the screen displays information about the matching status. Likewise, if there is no match, the LED lights only once and for a long time. 
Information about the mismatch is displayed on the screen. Let's watch. The success rate of the fingerprint authentication method we used in our study is 70%. As, as can be seen from the figure, this value is provided when the threshold value is 33 in our fingerprint algorithm. In the study, three different methods were tested using various length keys. When we look at table 2, the AES 128-bit encryption method is used in our system because it is still secure and the processing time is the fastest. And final parts, conclusions and feature work. A fingerprint-based biometric authentication method has been proposed for privacy and security in IoT. In the system, the security of biometric data in transmission channel and database was also taken into account. Three different encryption methods were compared and the fastest method was applied in our system. In the future studies, our system can be developed by considering both the authentication and security aspects. A biometric method with a higher accuracy rate can be used to improve authentication performance or a fingerprint algorithm with a higher performance rate than the fingerprint algorithm we have used in our system can be used. On the security aspects, fingerprints can be protected both in the transmission channel and in the database using safer and faster algorithms to be found in the future. In this way, system security will be higher. In addition, the security of the system can be increased by using multimodal biometric authentication using more than one biometric data. However, the security of biometric data should also be considered. Thank you for listening to me. You can reach our work in IEEE Consumer Electronics Magazine.